When Jesus was in the world, he was clearly aware of his mission, which was to save mankind from sin. To accomplish this mission, he must lay down his life. He told his disciples, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Jesus explained the twofold purpose of his coming into this world, to serve and to give his life as a ransom. Let's ponder on each of these aspects. Jesus is the Creator and the King over all creation. But when He came in the flesh as a man, He humbled Himself and took on the form of a servant. He was born in a manger and lived a lowly life. Jesus owned the whole world, yet He became poor for us. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor so that you by his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 Jesus gave up a life of comfort in order to preach the good news of the kingdom of God and heal the sick. He said to someone who wished to become his disciple, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Luke chapter 9, verse 58 the term Son of Man was Jesus' way of referring to Himself. It indicates the fact that He was a man like us, and it was associated with His lowliness and sufferings. In order to carry out His ministry, Jesus also suffered rejection, envy, hatred, and accusations. He fulfilled the prophecy about the suffering servant in the book of Isaiah. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3. Because of Jesus' sufferings, he can fully relate to our sufferings and sympathize with us. He knows and understands our grief and our pain. Jesus' sufferings culminated on the cross on which He gave His own life for mankind. From the beginning of His ministry, Jesus knew that He must suffer and die on the cross to accomplish salvation. He declared, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. John chapter 3, verses 14-15 to By being lifted up, Jesus meant that He would be hung on the cross, and that he would eventually resurrect and receive glory. The purpose for his death on the cross is so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. After about three years of public ministry, when the time came for Jesus to carry out his mission, he resolutely journeyed to Jerusalem. He foretold of his death to his disciples. See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Matthew chapter 20, verses 18 to 19. As Jesus predicted, one of his disciples betrayed him and made arrangements with the religious authorities to arrest Jesus. Jesus, facing the agony that he was about to endure on the cross, prayed with loud cries in the Garden of Gethsemane and he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Luke chapter 22, verses 41 to 44. On the night of the Jewish Passover, Judas, the disciple of Jesus who betrayed him, brought with him a great multitude with swords and clubs to arrest Jesus. In obedience to the will of the Heavenly Father, Jesus surrendered himself to his enemies. The Jewish council produced false witnesses to bring charges against Jesus and condemned Jesus to death. They brought Jesus to the Roman governor, Pilate, to have him executed. Pilate questioned Jesus and could not find any fault in Jesus. But because of the intense pressures from the Jews and their leaders, Pilate gave in to their wishes. He
He washed his hands to declare that he had no part in shedding the blood of an innocent man. Then Pilate ordered that Jesus be executed. The Bible records the humiliation and torture Jesus endured. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. Matthew chapter 27 verses 27 to 31. Crucifixion was the cruelest form of execution. The Romans reserved it for the worst criminals. Crucifixion was designed to cause an excruciating slow death. Jesus, although he was a righteous man, was crucified as a criminal, with two robbers crucified next to him. Even as he was hung on the cross, the people below hurled insults at him. On the cross, we see the darkest side of humanity. The greatest evil was perpetrated against the perfect Son of God. But on the cross, we also see the triumph of good over evil through the greatest manifestation of love. As he had told his disciples, Jesus became our ransom. Jesus' sacrificial death is to redeem us from our sins. He paid for our transgressions and bore our punishment. God laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was forsaken by God and tasted death on our behalf. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. As Jesus was suffering on the cross, darkness covered the whole land, as if heaven could not bear to see the punishment inflicted on the Son of God. Jesus finally cried with a loud cry, bowed his head, and gave up his spirit. Then the earth shook, and the curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Even the Roman centurion and the soldiers were in great awe at Jesus' death and said, Truly this was the Son of God. There is no greater love than what our Lord Jesus has suffered for us. God does not simply love us from a distance or with some feelings of affection. He loved us by coming to this world to bear our pain and to die for us, who have rebelled against Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. John chapter 3, verse 16 Through the death of His Son, God has given us the greatest gift, eternal life. The way to receive this gift is to believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior and entrust our lives to Him. I invite you to learn more about what it means to believe in Jesus by watching the video series on salvation.